Welcome back to our Next Step study. I hope you've been blessed uh, by the lessons that you have been going through. Uh, I'm going to be sharing our next lesson tonight, and we're going to be talking about bearing fruit, uh, the importance of fruit in a Christian's life. And we hope you're following along with the handout. Uh, there'll be several blanks that you can fill in. I do encourage you to follow along, fill in those blanks, and then go back and maybe reread the handout in its entirety so that you just have the content and the information uh, there in your mind. Matthew chapter 7, we're going to read verses 16 through 20. It should be there also on your handout, and I want to read these to you. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, the Bible says, by their fruits, you will know them. Well, as an unsaved person, you may have been involved in many things that are no longer part of your lifestyle. Uh, the Bible teaches us that when a person is born again, when a person is filled with the Spirit of the Lord, they've been baptized, they've been born again, they become a new creature in Christ. Now, that will be your first blank if you're following along in the notes. New creature. Amen. Uh, and because we are new, you know, it says, it uses the word creature, but it's talking about a new creation, a new person, so to speak. And because we are a new creature or a new creation in Christ, uh, we have or should have new goals and purpose. There's your next couple of blanks there. New goals and purpose. Uh, in other words, the Bible says old things have passed away. It's like our old way of living, the, the way we used to live, the things we used to enjoy. All of that has passed away. I've been born again, filled with the Spirit of the Lord. I'm living a new life. Uh, I've become a new creation. My goals have changed. My purpose has changed. And so all things have passed away. And as the Bible said, behold, all things are new. They're, they're newer. I'm growing. I'm learning. I'm changing my life. There's two very important questions for every Christian to ask. The first one is, what does God want me to do with my life? Uh, I've been born again, filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Now, what does God want me to do with my life? A second very important question that every Christian should ask is, how can I know that my life is pleasing to God? Well, the answer to both of those questions, question number one, what does God want me to do with my life? And question number two, how can I know my life is pleasing? Both of those questions, the answer to them is found in John chapter 15, verse number 8. Here is what it says. By this, my Father is glorified. Now, this is Jesus saying these words. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. You know, when our lives bear fruit, the kingdom of God is advanced and God's goodness and God's mercy are revealed in and through our lives. Uh, simply put, and, and here are a couple of blanks to, to fill in, but simply put, when we bear fruit, our life glorifies and pleases God. Let me say that again. When we bear fruit, our lives glorifies and pleases God. You know, God has always been interested in His disciples, His followers, being fruitful. Here's a couple of more 
blanks to fill in in your notes. Uh, he commands the earth to be fruitful. Genesis chapter number 1, he wants the earth to be fruitful. Uh, in Genesis chapter 1, he also commanded that the fish and the birds would be fruitful. And then also in Genesis chapter 1, he commanded mankind to be fruitful. And then he commanded Noah. If you know this story in Genesis chapter 9, Noah and the flood. And after the flood, he said, Noah, I want you to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And then, if you know the passage of Scripture in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 21, Jesus cursed a fig tree because it was not being fruitful. So understand that God has always been interested in multiplying, in fruitfulness, in, in change. From the very beginning, we see God's desire for reproduction and fruitfulness in his creation. Now, I want you to put this in your next blank. The same is true with his new creation in us. Amen. Uh, we are born again, filled with the Spirit of the Lord, baptized in the name of Jesus, and we are recreated, that's that born again, in order to bear much fruit. Now, I want to talk about the parable of the unfruitful tree. This is found in your notes, Luke chapter 13, verses 6 through 9. Let me read those to you. Jesus spake this parable, A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it, and he found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and found none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and I fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. Now, be prepared to fill in some blanks here in your notes. The first point I want to make under letter A is the owner expected fruit from the tree he had planted and invested in. He expected fruit. Letter B, this tree was cultivated in a vineyard and it was cared for by a steward. So the owner of the vineyard, here's the word, invested in the fruitfulness of the fig tree. Again, the owner of the vineyard invested in the fruitfulness of the fig tree. Well, the same way when we are born again, we become God's vineyard. He invests his spirit in us, his word in our lives. And the word is often symbolized as a, as a food. Uh, the word of God is like bread. It's like food. And the spirit of God is often likened as to water. And so let her see when the fig tree was unfruitful, well, he was patient with it. He worked on it to make it more fruitful. The fig tree was spared with the hope that further investing in this fig tree would lead to productivity. You see, God will prune and work on our lives in order for us to be productive. You see, this parable of the unfruitful tree impresses upon us the great importance and investment that God makes in fruitfulness. And it, it also, this parable also speaks of both God's expectation and patience in our lives. That's your next blank in your notes, patience. God expects um, fruitfulness and there's patience in our lives. So I, I want to talk about what type of fruit 
should we bear? Well, the first thing, and this will be your next blank in the notes, we are called to be fruitful through discipleship. That's your word, discipleship. Uh, Jesus referred to making disciples as a harvest and as fruit. John chapter 4, verse 35 and 36 says, Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. So letter A there is Jesus referred to making disciples as a harvest and as fruit. Here's the next one, letter B. Romans chapter 1, verse 13, Paul, the apostle, alluded to those he discipled as a type of fruit. So here's what I want you to write down. I want you to write down these words, other people. Other people. You see, other people can be fruit of our lives and ministry, people that we reach with the gospel, people that we invite to church, people that we teach a Bible study can be fruits of our reaching out to them. Romans chapter 1 verse 13 says, Now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. Notice, he said that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. You see, we as followers of Christ, as Christians, should seek to reproduce that which has been produced in us. We can do this. You say, how do we do this? We can do this through witnessing witnessing to others. We can do this through teaching others. We can do this through mentoring others. There, I want you to write that down, through witnessing, teaching, and mentoring other people. That's how other people can become the fruit of our lives and our ministry. And then let us see, write the word every. Because every believer shares in the mission of Jesus to reach the lost and to make disciples. Uh, so, because of that, evangelism and discipleship are a primary calling in every Christian's life. Evangelism and discipleship, that's a calling. That's a primary calling in every Christian's life. So God also expects us to see the fruit of the Spirit in every Christian's life. I want you to write that down, the fruit of the Spirit. God expects to see fruit in our lives. I want to read to you Galatians chapter 5, verse 20 through, 22 through 24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness and faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. You see, this particular type of fruit is revealed in the Christian's attitude. Jesus said of his disciples that they would be known of, by their love for one another. That's John 13, 35. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Now, if you're, again, following along in the notes, we're going to have several blanks here, so be prepared to write this down. As Christians that are growing and maturing, our attitudes, our temperament, and responses 
should reflect the continued influence of the Spirit that's happening in our lives. I want to say that again if you're taking notes. Our attitudes, our temperament, and our responses should reflect the continued influence of God's Spirit moving in our lives. You see, the longer we serve God, the longer we're committed to the Lord, the more developed this fruit should become in our life. It should be developing. It should be growing. We are maturing. Amen. Our attitudes are changing. Our responses are changing. Our temperament is changing. So letter B, it is important to note that the fruit of the Spirit happens as we follow His leadership in our lives. As we follow God's leading, God's leadership in our lives, and as we crucify our old nature. Amen. Got to understand that the fruit of the Spirit is going to happen as we follow the leadership of the Lord and we crucify, we deny our flesh. We, we fast, we discipline our life, we walk with God, we crucify this flesh so the fruit of the Spirit should be a natural byproduct of being a healthy Christian. As we walk with God, grow with God, serve God, a natural byproduct of that is we should be developing Christian fruit. Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, gentleness, long-suffering. That should be happening as a byproduct. Let us see in your notes, the fruit of the Spirit is the development of, of Christian character that happens, minds are renewed in Him. I want to read to you Ephesians 4, verses 22 through 24. That you put off concerning your former conduct the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. Now, let's keep going in our notes. Another type of fruit is good works. Write that down. Another type of fruit is good works. You know, we're not saved by good works, but we are called to have good works in our lives. Let me read to you Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And letter B, God is pleased when we are fruitful in Christian behaviors and disciplines. God is pleased when we are fruitful in Christian behaviors and disciplines. Colossians 1.10 says that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now, uh, you, you should have a set of four blanks there. And I want you to write this down because these are some disciplines that we can grow in. Number one, devotions. Put the word devotions. We, we need daily devotions in our lives. Uh, benevolence. The word benevolence. Doing good deeds, giving, and, and, and doing good acts to others. A third one you can write down is stewardship. God wants us to be good stewards of our time good stewards of our lives, good stewards in our families, uh, good stewards in giving to the kingdom of God in our tithe and offerings. Amen. God expects that. That's a discipline. And then service. Write the word down, service. We serve God and serve others. Let us see the fruit of, the, uh, the fruit of good works glorifies God and draws others to Him. The fruit of good works glorifies God 
and draws others to him. Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So how does one bear fruit? Well, I want you to consider something. I want you to consider the natural process of fruit. And if you're following along there in your notes, all fruit begins with a seed. A seed. Uh, we are born again spiritually of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God that is planted in our hearts. And that seed of God's Word has the life of God locked up in that seed. And when that seed of the Word of God gets planted in us, it begins to produce the harvest of the life of God in us. And then the seed, again, we're following this natural process. All fruit begins with a seed that gets planted, and the seed has to draw water and nutrients from its environment. Uh, in other words, we stay connected to God through prayer and fellowship. The way we stay connected to Almighty God is through prayer and fellowship. And then, the next part of your notes, fruitfulness is the natural byproduct of spiritual maturity. Fruitfulness. Uh, the natural byproduct of spiritual maturity. Paul instructs us that there is a time that we have to grow up spiritually. We have to tr transition from the milk of God's Word to solid food of God's Word. And as we, we go through this maturing process, we will begin to bear fruit. It will happen. We just have to keep eating, so to speak, the Word of God and drinking the Spirit of God, so to speak, growing in our walk, growing in our disciplines, being faithful, hearing the Word of God preached and taught, daily devotions, learning to pray and fellowship and connect with God. And as we do that, as we grow and mature, we will begin to develop fruit. John 15 Verses 1 through 7 provide some important insights for fruit bearing. I want to read this to you, and we'll be done with our lesson here in just a few moments. But Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, Jesus said, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me, Jesus said. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, Jesus said, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now, in the last few minutes of our lesson, I want you to be prepared. We've got several blanks, and I want you to write this down. Uh, one bears fruit, notice the Bible said, by abiding or staying connected to the vine, which is Jesus. If we're going to bear fruit, we've got to stay connected to Jesus. And this can be done through several means. And if you want to write these down, you say, Pastor, how do I stay connected to the vine? We do that through prayer. We do that through fellowship. 
and we do that through worship. Prayer, fellowship, worship. That helps us stay connected to the vine. And then, one bears fruit by allowing God's Word to abide in us. Jesus said, if I abide in you, if my words abide in you. And how do we do that? Here are several things you can write down. Reading, reading the Bible. Studying, studying the Word of God. Uh, memorization or memorizing Scripture. Putting Scripture in our memory bank. They're filed here. We can draw from that like a sword. Okay, uh, Meditation. Meditation upon God. Meditation upon the Word of God. And of the application of the Word of God. So applying the Word of God. So reading the Word, studying the Word, memorizing the Word of God, meditating upon the Word, and then simply applying the Word of God to our lives. All of that is essential <laughs> if we're going to abide in Him and His words abide in us and we bear fruit. The last thing I want to share with you is one bears fruit by dying to the world. We, we die out, so to speak, to the world uh, to our fleshly nature and cravings. We, we, we put that aside. We die out to that. Uh, we allow ourselves to be full of God's Spirit and allowing, <coughs> excuse me, allowing God, and you can write this word down, to prune, prune. Allowing God to prune those unproductive parts of our life. Just like a person would take pruning shears to cut those deadened branches off, those unproductive branches, we must allow God's Word, God's Spirit to, to, to kind of cut away the unproductive areas of our lives. We cannot bear fruit if we are unwilling to allow unproductive branches to be removed from our lives. If we don't allow God to prune us and uh, to cut some things out of our lives. We're not going to produce fruit. So let me wrap all of this up in this next step lesson and tell you the results of doing all of these things we've shared in this lesson. The results will show in your effectiveness as a witness. It will show in your attitude. It will show in your continued growth in holiness. So I hope here in, in these 30 minutes that we've shared some things that are going to help you in growing and bearing fruit. It is the will of God for you and I to bear fruit. So feel free to read these notes again. You can go on to our further lessons in our next step study. And I highly encourage you to, to keep at it. Keep going through these lessons so that you can grow in your walk with God. Uh, that's God's will, and these lessons are a great resource to help you stay on track, to grow, to mature, and to prepare to bear much fruit. I'm so thankful that you've joined me in this lesson. I pray the hand of God and the blessings of God upon you. May the Lord richly bless you is our prayer.